Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for City of Greensboro news and information. The Solid Waste and Recycling Department will deliver gray 95-gallon yard waste containers to Greensboro households by May 20th. Each household will receive one container unless the homeowner opted out. If a second container was purchased before April 1st, it will also be delivered by May 20th. Residents may begin using the containers as soon as they arrive. The container is for leaves, branches, and grass clippings only. Do not place plastic bags, animal waste, food, planters, rocks, soil, mulch, dirt, or any other items in the yard waste container. Place the yard waste container at the curb on your regular garbage collection day. Personal garbage cans may be used for extra waste only through June 30th. Homeowners may still purchase one additional yard waste container for $65. For assistance, call the contact center at 336-373-2489. For more information on the new yard waste rules, visit the city's website. The Greensboro Urban Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, wants public input on a proposed amendment and revisions to the thoroughfare and collector street plan. The amendment would remove a planned widening and construction of a bypass for US 158 between Piney Grove Road and I-73 US 220 in Stokesdale. The public has until 5 p.m. on April 30th to submit written comments on whether to retain or remove the future planned project. The public may also comment during a public hearing at the May 8th virtual meeting of the MPO Transportation Advisory Committee. The draft thoroughfare and collector street plan amendments is available for review on the MPO website. The proposed plan is designed to balance future development with future planned roads. The US 158 widening and bypass was proposed to divert increasing traffic from the town of Stokesdale. Send comments to Engineering Supervisor Lydia McIntyre at P.O. Box 3136 in Greensboro 27402-3136. The Greensboro Urban Area MPO manages the federally required transportation planning process for the area's highway, transit, bicycle, and pedestrian facilities. The City of Greensboro has been awarded a $500,000 grant from the Federal Transit Administration's Transit-Oriented Development Planning Pilot Program. This funding, secured by Congresswoman Kathy Manning, allows the City to study strategies for transit-oriented development around the J. Douglas Galleon Depot. The purpose of the study is to explore avenues for revitalizing the surrounding area by leveraging economic opportunities and integrating a diverse range of housing options. Mayor Nancy Vaughn said Representative Kathy Manning's support is instrumental in helping achieve the city's priority to provide an abundance of attainable housing. This grant will allow the city to explore a variety of housing and mixed-use development with the depot serving as the connector. The J. Douglas Galleon Depot serves as the main passenger transfer for Greensboro Transit Agency and a hub for Amtrak, Part, and Greyhound. The depot provides essential connectivity for residents while promoting easy commuting to work and other opportunities. Cone Health has partnered with the city to share a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Following these tips is an easy way to help each of us improve our quality of life. Let's take a moment to check out today's news for your health. About 75% of women sometime during menopause experience hot flashes. Are you feeling the heat? One of the first things that I hear is, well, what can I do about this? Uh, what can I do to minimize the chance that I'll have hot flashes? And I usually start at the beginning of the day. The first thing is that nice hot shower in the morning should probably be more tepid because many women complain, I can't even get dressed in the morning before I'm breaking out in a sweat, I can't put my makeup on. So start with a much cooler shower. The other thing is as you're choosing the things that you will wear during the day, choose to dress in layers that you can indeed 
peel off if you begin to have hot flashes and then put your sweater back on when that passes and you're feeling more cool. Some of the things that we eat and drink can cause hot flashes and so if you notice that every time you have a spicy meal that's a miserable time that evening then you want to avoid those kinds of foods and alcohol is a well-known trigger of hot flashes so you may need to moderate the amount of alcohol that you drink. People wonder about that morning cup of coffee sometimes and whether caffeine is a trigger. For some women it can be exercise which causes just about everybody to sweat if you are doing it right can actually minimize hot flashes. Many women when they're asked whether they're having hot flashes will say well what's that? I try to describe it as a sensation of warmth that can be as little as something that will cause you to wipe your brow but as significant as something that makes you want to take your sweater off, that can cause your hair to become wet, can cause your clothing to become wet, as if you've just run a mile, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And you may actually experience a sense of chill after it's gone. The key is that it's repetitive. It goes away, it comes back. It can happen many times during the day and during the night. Or you may be one of the fortunate women who has only a couple during a day. Once a woman is having some difficulty with hot flashes, one of the main questions I get is, how long is this going to go on? Because if it's going to be a month, well, I can deal with that. But if it's going to be 10 years, maybe I need something to assist me. So. Um, usually we think in terms of seven years as an average, but really women can begin to have hot flashes even before they have the diagnosis of menopause, and it can last as many as 10 or 15 years for some women. There is medication that is designed to address whatever residual symptoms there are. And those medications fall basically into two categories. One is hormones that are designed to give back some of the hormone that women are making too little of to control their symptoms. And one is non-hormonal. A woman should see their doctor at least once a year for a general discussion of their reproductive health. And that visit will include discussions about what is going on in terms of movement out of the reproductive age into menopause, that perimenopausal time frame that can be so disruptive, as well as whether there are any menopausal symptoms that need to be addressed. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope this information has been helpful to you. For more information, visit conehealth.com slash menopause. Thank you again. I'm Dr. Vanessa Haygood. A major infrastructure project has caused a popular road closure and will introduce you to the first resident of the 2024 residency at the hires. We'll have those stories and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Hackett Street between East Gate City Boulevard and the on-ramp to Highway 29 will be closed due to a water main replacement. The work, which takes place from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. today through Thursday, April 18th, may cause minor traffic delays. Motorists are urged to use alternate routes in order to avoid the construction area. If you notice discoloration or cloudy water coming from your tap after the repairs, run cold water for a few minutes through a faucet without an aerator, such as an outside spigot or the bathtub, until the water runs clear. For other water and sewer emergencies, such as water main breaks, sewer backups, discolored drinking water, and hydrant flushing, call 336-373-2033.
Creative Greensboro welcomes Intune Incorporated as the first resident of the residency at the hires for the 2024 season. Intune Incorporated will create, rehearse, and perform a new musical cabaret called Mezzo Forte. Performances will take place at 6 p.m. on May 2nd and 3rd, and again at noon and 6 p.m. on May 4th at the Greensboro Cultural Center at 200 North Davy Street. Mezzo Forte delivers live music from diverse genres, from soulful melodies to lively rhythms. The audience will be captivated as they expand their musical horizons and gain a deeper appreciation for different styles of music. Mezzo Forte is not only a night of entertainment, but it's also an opportunity to support the local talent of Intune Incorporated, which contributes to the vibrancy of Greensboro's arts community. Prepare to immerse yourself in a cultural enrichment experience where music, storytelling, and visual art converge to create an unforgettable evening. For tickets or more information, contact Creative Greensboro's Performing Arts Coordinator, Todd Fisher, at 336-373-2974. The summer swim season is just around the corner. Pools and spray grounds will be free to access this summer. The Barber Park and Keeley Park spray grounds and the pools at Warnersville and Windsor are undergoing routine maintenance in anticipation of opening weekend next month. Opening day is pending Guilford County Health Department inspections and permits. Lindley Pool will remain closed due to ongoing maintenance and repairs. Peeler Pool is also closed undergoing maintenance with no estimated date for completion. Warnersville Pool will open on May 25th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekends and Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays starting June 11th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Windsor Pool will open on May 25th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on the weekends and Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays starting June 10th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. The Barber Park and Keeley Park Spray Grounds open on May 25th, Mondays through Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The LeBauer Park Splash Pad opens on May 1st, operating daily from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Summer jobs are available for lifeguards. Visit the city's website to learn more and to apply. Reducing our carbon footprint is one way to replenish the ozone layer for the benefit of future generations. Coming up after the break, we'll take you behind the scenes of Greensboro's Earth Day celebration. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The City of Greensboro has an entire team devoted to sustainability and resilience. Joining me now to promote the big Earth Day event is Michelle Gill Moffitt. She is the Sustainability Analyst with the Office of Sustainability and Resilience. Hello, Michelle. Welcome hey, to Carla. the show. Thank you. Good to see you. I know you and your team have been extremely busy as we're getting ready for Earth Day on April 20th. Tell us what types of activities and exhibitors will be participating this year. Yeah, this is a really big event for us. This is the first time we've brought Earth Day back since before COVID. So we've partnered with several other um, city departments, Parks and Rec, the libraries, um, solid waste and recycling, water resources, to really join all of our forces mm -hmm. and figure out how we can provide the community with the best opportunity to understand what's happening in the environment and to enjoy the earth. Um, so we've got over 50 vendors that will be joining us, uh, community partners, city agencies, um, as well as we'll have EV vehicles, so folks can get an idea of what an electric vehicle does, how it runs. We'll have the city's eco bus um, with us. We'll have four different food trucks, um, so people can explore things, mm -hmm. hands-on activities about planting, um, gardening, water conservation, recycling, composting, you name okay. it. Okay, so I was gonna say, how can residents do their part to support Earth Day? So naturally, if they attend this event, they can take advantage of a lot of this educational opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. We really wanted to focus this year instead of just folks coming in and being able to see an exhibit, having hands-on activities. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to come and, and learn things. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about is we're doing mini sessions. So yeah. folks will be able to learn from experts in our community about the environment on things like how to compost, mm -hmm. um, storm water, how to dig and plant trees, yeah. you know, in the proper way. And we'll be um, giving away some products and we have a native plant giveaway that we're also doing. 
Wonderful. Now, in your view, explain the importance of this event and why would you say sustainability and resilience is an urgent matter? Yeah, you know, I think um, with Earth Day and this particular event, it's exciting because we want to make sure that the residents know that the city of Greensboro is committed to doing our part um, for sustainability and for our environment. And so this, op this event will allow us to show that to the community and then give them ways that they can learn how to also be sustainable at home. Um, one of the things that we're also doing at this event is the Live Green Awards, mm -hmm. where we will be recognizing businesses and individuals in our community who, um, who practice sustainability in their business or in their personal life. Yeah. And so that award will be going off at 2.15. Okay, well, we definitely want to rally a huge audience for that and congratulate those folks for their efforts. And next year, we'll be here before you know it. So our plans already underway for Earth Day 2025? Yeah, I mean, I think we're always thinking of what we can do next and how we can make things bigger and better. We're going to have a QR code where folks can scan and give us some, um, some of their feedback of what they'd like to see sure. when they exit the event. Okay, well, thank you, Michelle, for all the coordination of Earth Day. Yeah. I know it's a big team effort, but um, each of you have been working hard for several months trying to put this together. And of course, the awards that you mentioned, I have no doubt this will be a huge success and very well attended. Thank we you. hope that you'll come back and tell us about other ways we can be sustainable. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Absolutely. Stay tuned for some interesting and useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact you and our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The city council meetings take place in the Katie Dorsett Council Chamber on level two of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The public is allowed in person, but only in a limited capacity. Those who choose not to be in the building can participate virtually. The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Guilford Metro 911 is celebrating National Public Safety Telecommunications Week today through Saturday, April 20th. This annual recognition honors those who answer emergency calls, dispatch emergency professionals and equipment during a time of crisis, and render life-saving assistance to 911 callers. The celebration will include an award ceremony at 1 p.m. on Friday, April 19th at the Guilford Metro 911 Justice Complex, honoring the Telecommunicator of the Year, Support Person of the Year, and Rookie of the Year. Employees are nominated by their peers. The nominations are sent to a group of 911 professionals throughout North Carolina to select the winners. This year, the agency is honoring the 54 lives saved by the telecommunicators who provided callers with CPR instructions. Guilford Metro 911 is a consolidated 911 public safety answering point serving all of Greensboro and Guilford County with approximately 130 employees. Last year, the center handled more than 725,000 phone calls 400,000 dispatches, and 2.5 million radio transmissions. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendars for the places to go and things to do on the town. I'm Dave, and here are some special events happening this week on the town. The 10-time Tony Award-winning musical Moulin Rouge visits the Tanger Center for a 16-show run April 16th through the 28th. The spectacle is based on the iconic 2001 film where bohemians and aristocrats rub elbows and revel in electrifying enchantment. Buy tickets and learn more at tangercenter.com. The city's Human Rights Department hosts its annual Fair Housing Month luncheon at noon on April 18th at the Greensboro Coliseum Terrace. 
The luncheon raises awareness of the importance of safe, affordable, and accessible housing. Visit greensboro-nc.gov for tickets and more information. The world-famous Harlem Globetrotters visits the Greensboro Coliseum April 20th. Be amazed by new levels of mind-blowing trick shots, expert ball handling skills, and big laughs as the Globetrotters dribble, spin, and dunk their way past the Washington Generals. Visit GreensboroColiseum.com for tickets and more information. The Royal Expressions Contemporary Ballet presents The Hair Journey, an original ballet that celebrates beauty, self-love, and identity through the lens of black hair. See the performance April 23rd at the UNC Greensboro Auditorium or next month in Winston-Salem. Learn more at royalexpressions.org. Stay tuned to FYI Weekly for more happenings on the town. Welcome back. The city of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Guilford Works has been awarded nearly $385,000 from the Golden Leaf Foundation to support education and training for the Guilford County workforce. This helps to meet the growing demand of the renewable, clean energy and electric vehicle industries for workers in advanced manufacturing, IT and skilled trades. This funding will support pipeline building in advanced manufacturing certifications, which includes work-based learning, supportive services, equipment, instruction, and travel costs. Guilford Works Executive Director Dr. Danielle Harrison said advanced manufacturing is an in-demand employment sector within our community. With the influx of job opportunities in our region, it is imperative Guilford Works does its part to fulfill our mission of creating opportunities of advancement for job seekers and employer clients. The Goldleaf Foundation grant creates an opportunity to expose underserved communities to in-demand career and training opportunities while helping build talent pipelines for employers in emerging industries throughout the Piedmont Triad and the state of North Carolina. Coming up after the break is our Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department. The city will host the fourth annual Chalk Walk, a celebration of chalk artistry and competition. The fun will take place from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 20th at the Greensboro Arboretum on Star Mount Drive. The public is invited to view dozens of unique chalk art pieces and cast a ballot for their favorite artwork. Artists of all ages may register to participate for $10. Artists are required to provide their own supplies and materials. For more information, contact Community Engagement Coordinator Jennifer Hans at 336-373-2964. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings, which airs on 90.1 FM, 100.7 FM, and 90.5 FM. Be sure to download both weekly podcasts, Talk City Greensboro, and Connect GSO. Plus, GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.